1958, Ross Arnault was trying to decide what to name his new chocolate snack biscuit. He took a trip to the Kentucky Derby, and after enjoying himself immensely, decided to name the snack after the winning horse, Tim Tam. Luckily for Arnault, the winner that day wasn't one of these other actual, not-made-up thoroughbred horse names. Riding Miss Daisy, Brangelina, Bodacious Tatas, Slump Buster, Where's the Beef, Odor in the Court, Barely Legal, Turducken, Junk in the Trunk, Walk of Shame, Panty Raid, and that's what she said. Sadly, the one name that has never been used on a horse, but would certainly ensure victory is... You tried it! It's You Tried That! We're back to try three snacks to help you out. I'm your host, Nick Novak, with my co-host, Chad Hancock. Hello! And Nick Geiger. Hi! (laughs) <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> We're workshopping new entrances. What do you think? Okay. I'm talking with a fake British accent now. Cheerio. <laughs> what's the, no back what's that you, uh, to? I'm confused. Uh, I just felt like doing it. Okay. So I was going to share a story here and see what you guys thought. Just a couple weeks ago, a guy I work with was ill and texted me some things he needed done. I said, oh, what's wrong? You all right? And he said, sick at home with food poisoning. Now, I'm going to read the text word for word and see if you can decipher this. All right. Do it. I hope you're feeling better soon. What did you eat? And this is a word for word, his response. He says, quiche. I think what happened is it fell off the shelf and it was just hanging near the ground. So it spoiled. <laughs> huh? <laughs> nice word salad there. Hanging. <laughs> so quiche. Quiche isn't something that can really hang. Right. Right. And near the ground of what? You know? (laughs) First of all, if you're in your house where there are shelves, I would describe that as the floor, not the ground. (laughs) So does he have have this quiche in, like, his work shed outside? What was the phrase about quiche and hanging? Reread that part. I think what happened is it fell off the shelf and was just hanging near the ground, so it spoiled. (laughs) <laughs> also its proximity to the ground probably has nothing to do with how bad it's spoiled i think on the ground is worse actually than what's just worse yeah. so we we sat and laughed at this for about <laughs> a, a, a couple hours just like t- uh messaging back and forth at work about it and before i decided to finally ask him we're trying to get some clarification on this ground quiche so, <laughs> so actually, my return text is actually Kevin and I are trying to figure out what a quiche hanging near the ground is. <laughs> and he, here's his lengthy response: Like I opened the fridge, and I'm not sure if it fell or if it had been sitting near the base of the fridge the whole day. If it was sitting near the base of the fridge, it could have spoiled, or this could be a flu bug. I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 so this is leftover quiche what kind of fridge does he have that is varying temperatures between the top and the bottom <laughs> there's a 45 degree difference between the top and the bottom <laughs> of his fridge apparently so leftover like quiche is never a good idea third of all it was still hanging was it hanging in his fridge or is this just a Maybe poor phrase it that... was like hanging out like with the mold like he keeps mold and it's just hanging <laughs> Just They're hanging chilling out. out. <laughs> They're bros. Bros in the fridge. <laughs> it was like the clarification made it worse, actually. So is this guy, you said the guy's just kind of a strange guy? It's he definitely does. just a, an odd kind of guy, but in a funny type of way. And I know we never got real clarification on, on what exactly that was. I will pay this guy at least like 20 bucks to bring quiche to your next work breakfast. <laughs> Do you guys have any interesting missed texts? I get a lot from my brother, actually. Shout out to my brother who was on this podcast a few episodes ago. He, for some reason, has a serious problem with his autocorrect. He can't do the phone keyboard for some reason, so I'm constantly getting texts from him. Like, with, I I don't even understand what he's saying half the time. (laughs) And he'll just just blame it on, like, the keyboard or autocorrect. And I'm like, is it the keyboard? Or do you just, like, not know how to type after all these There's no proofreading? Oh, Exactly zero proofreading. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so my dad will email me still and or text me, and it'll just be one line with no punctuation, all like lowercase of like, how's it going, dad? All in one line, like, 
And then I had to realize that dad is the, his, his signature. Like, how's it going? Now? Call me later, dad. Actually, the only kind of, and I think I told you guys the story last time Chad was in town, but the weirdest thing that's happened to me in terms of like weird text or phone interaction was actually this woman kept FaceTiming me, like this young lady, thinking I was her husband. I don't know how she got her like she it long story short at the end of the day we f- figured out that my number was like one number off from her husband's old work number or something but she kept facetiming me and be like hey or she texts me like hey can you pick up dinner and i'd be like who is this <laughs> she's like it's me and i'm like huh like i know it's not betsy so i'm like i think you have the wrong number so i was telling my wife this so she didn't think i was having some sort of weird clandestine affair and then we were in the car my wife and my kids and i and I get a FaceTime from this girl, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to answer it right in front of you to prove once and for all nothing's weirds going on. So I hit it, and <laughs> all that shows up on the screen is an infant baby, and I hear, <laughs> say hi to daddy. And I'm like, uh, this isn't dad. And she like spins it around. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, talk to my wife. So I like stuck the phone at Betsy. And she's like, I keep calling your husband. I swear to God, nothing's going on. There's no excuse for that anymore because nobody ever dials a number at this point. (laughs) That's what I was confused about because I, to your point, I never actually type a number. And if it's especially if it's her husband's, she's got to have it pre-programmed. She had it pre-programmed wrong and was just too lazy to fix it after calling you wrong all those times. (laughs) Repeatedly. I mean, she might have seen me on the street and did a lot of research to find out my phone number because she thought I was hot. I mean, that's a legitimate nope. possibility. Didn't happen. No, that was the research. No. <laughs> following you around, she, she followed me around and waited for me. How long was it between I mean, calls? Yeah, that's the other she thing. Messed up, right? And then didn't change it. You know, if she called back the next day, <laughs> then you'd be like, "Well, you just need to change this." But let's say it was weeks later. I could look past it a little more. There was a lot of time in between, like a couple. It was all told it was maybe four times over the course of like two months. But if she really thought I was her husband, does that mean they only talk like four times in two months? Or like (laughs) maybe I think she said my number was close to her husband's work number or something like that. So maybe she usually calls his personal seller but she's she's facetiming with his work number which is probably just like a regular yeah. desk yeah. phone that doesn't have FaceTime have on no it idea. yeah <laughs> nothing about it made any sense <laughs> all i know is i was staring into an infant being told to say hi to daddy this woman sounds like a dim bulb the only yeah. excuse is if it's some like 90 year old like i'm on a rotary phone <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she FaceTimed me from her rotary phone. <laughs> Am I talking to your face? Is that how this works? <laughs> you forgot the end of this. The story actually ends with the twist where that was your kid. Oh, sorry. So it turns out <laughs> I have a double life. It was my second wife, and this was an elaborate ploy to slowly reveal it to Betsy without her catching wind. Thank God she doesn't listen to this podcast, <laughs> except that every one of her friends does. <laughs> Betsy, if you're listening, which I know you're not, honestly, you really should listen. I have like three endeavors in life. This is one of them. <laughs> I'm not magically cheating on you with Facebook lady or FaceTime How- lady. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those could you keep getting before you couldn't play it off anymore? If like <laughs> how many different women call you telling you that it's their, <laughs> they had the next daddy. The next time it was like a guy with a beard. Hey, honey. <laughs> What the? Say hello to daddy. <laughs> <laughs> there was just like a gaggle of kids in a nursery. Say hello to your children. Like none of these are mine. I swear. None of these. <laughs> Returning test for all. Oh, so anyway, Chad, I heard your dog shit in your carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Correction. He puked on the carpet. Uh, he shit on the hardwood floors. Was he right in between the two? <laughs> no, the poop was in the back room, thank goodness. And then uh, the vomit was pretty dry, kind of easy to clean up. It's mostly peanut butter. So uh, peanut butter. On the detail. We had given him a Kong the night before and like stuffed it with like peanut butter and stuff like that. Chad, you can really tell us how that dog got that peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog barking in the background at the perfect time. Good job, Here's your treat. Here's some peanut butter. The next FaceTime I get is going to be from Rufus holding up a puppy that looks like me. 
puppy. <laughs> ring, ring. Say hello to daddy. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'd be thrilled if I had a talking dog. I don't think that, that would soften the blow of the other problems I had. <laughs> well, we would like to uh, hear what the fans have to say about this nonsense uh, that we talk about and, or about snacks. So before we get too far, Geiger, why don't you let people know where they can contact us? You can get in touch with us on Twitter, at you tried that. You can reach out to us directly through email, uh, you tried that at gmail.com. And of course, we're on Facebook as well. You guessed it, it's you tried that. So, and Instagram, Instagram, and hot or not, right? Yes, <laughs> hot or not. Each time we got to come up with a new website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're on hot or not. We've been getting a lot of fives for some reason, fives and sixes, but yeah, <laughs> right in the middle. I actually. W- posted I remember when hot or not was big this is back when we were in college i posted like a couple pictures of myself on there and i was getting mostly like fives and sixes and then i posted a picture of me standing in front of a uh lamborghini <laughs> so i went to the lamborghini dealership and just like had someone take a picture of me standing in front of it like sort of pretending that it was my lamborghini and then that picture was getting like eights <laughs> and so i'm like what all you, right what are you trying to say I'm trying to say I stole that Lamborghini, and now I have a nursery full of babies. <laughs> All because of that Lamborghini. So you're saying ladies like money? They don't like me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be rating some snacks here, and Chad, why don't you go over the rating system that we'll be using? Sure. We got five-point scale, starting at the top. Love dat, like dat, indifferent to dat, dislike dat, and hate that all right i don't want to mess around here at all i think since chad is a peanut butter cup aficionado Mm. we're going to start with the unreal dark chocolate peanut butter cup and i'm assuming chad you have had this before i have so they have two flavors of these actually they have the regular and then they have the crispy this is the crispy i picked out the crispy because I thought if we got the regular, we'd be just comparing it to the Reese's Cup. Are they all dark chocolate, the Unreal? They are, yeah. So that's one thing about them is that because of that, it's not quite as sweet. So if you find a Reese's Cup too sweet, then maybe check out these Unreal ones. They also have an almond butter one as well, which I've seen instead of peanut butter. But fuck that shit. These are also much thinner and smaller than a regular Reese's Cup. Yeah, so probably a more healthy portion, yeah. Is there chunky chunks of peanut in it? It's the crispy. It's like the little, I think they're like the little rice puff balls or whatever. All right, we're digging in here. Took a bite. The rice krispies are real tiny if they're there at all. Like I barely noticed it. And it doesn't have quite the same, like one thing, tell me if this is dumb. One thing I like about the Reese's Cup is that the with the border, it kind of, you know, sticks up a little bit. Yeah. This one looks more like an actual pie kind of looks where, you know, the top crust sort of is higher than the ridges around the edge. That bugs me. I don't know why. No, I like I like the uh, curve up of the yeah, Reese's Cup. You're right. This is no Reese's Cup. I like the dark chocolate part of it a lot. The peanut butter part is not anything special. I think the peanut butter is not, <clears throat> not so bad. It's okay. I'm not a huge dark chocolate fan. Yeah, I would actually say the opposite. For me, the part of this that I like is the peanut butter, but for me, the dark chocolate kind of brings it down a little bit. I rarely actually finish all this, of a snack we have, but I polish this guy off. Geiger, why don't you start us off? All right. I'm preempting this because I know you guys are going to laugh at my answer, but yes. I will say. Look at it! I don't... <laughs> I don't necessarily, like I said, I th- the peanut butter to me, I mean, it had a good peanut taste. It just seemed kind of chalky and wasn't as soft as I was expecting. I don't know. It, it's hard. it had a weird consistency to me. I also have zero idea what the crisps were in there for. They like weren't big enough to really, like, it was a tiny little pop in your, like, when you're crunching it, but I don't think they added anything to the taste or the texture that much. Having said that, I really like dark chocolate a lot, and the peanut butter taste was good, so I am going to give it a like that. All I'm saying is that I didn't quite understand the Rice Krispies part of it. All right. Chad, what do you think? I forgot to mention, this is probably going to be a tough episode for me to get through because right before this, like almost exactly right before we started recording, I ate six out of eight slices of a uh, medium pizza. So <laughs> after, after putting back that three quarters pie, I now have to eat all the snacks. What, what was on top of it, Tim Tams? It was a ranch dressing pizza with barbecue chicken on it. That sounds it. good. At least I thought you were going to say you ate a bunch of something chocolate. So. Yes. 
This at least is a little change of change of pace. But I'm super full right now is the point. But anyways, that didn't stop me from eating that entire peanut butter cup. So... <laughs> <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> the peanut butter's okay. I actually prefer this one, the crispy version, to the not crispy version because I think the crispiness is a nice sort of little crunch that just you get just a little bit of it, and I think that gives it a, a, a nice texture, but the dark chocolate doesn't really do it for me. Overall, I'm going to go with an indifferent to that for these. All right, so like an indifferent, oof. I'm right on the border. I, You both make good points. But I make better points. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy it. I mean, more, but I don't really like dark chocolate much, and this chocolate was decent. The peanut butter, I thought, tasted good, and I agree with Geiger that the crispiness wasn't there much, but also agree with Chad that the little bit that was there kind of was a nice crunch. Oh, man. I don't know. Which one of you do I love more? (laughs) (laughs) I've got no kids. Your life depends on your answer. You know what? I ate the whole thing, and I'd probably eat another one. I'm going to have to go with a like that for this. Yeah. Careful, Chad's going to kill you now. Apparently. You <laughs> motherfucker. I've proved long ago that I've loved Geiger, and Geiger, say hello to Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out your iPad, let's get on FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a decently strong start for the Unreal Bar, and I wouldn't have predicted that, that Chad would be the only indifferent, but you know, it might be the three-quarters pizza I... <laughs> acting here so <laughs> i actually thought that would be the case because you're hopelessly going to be comparing every peanut butter cup to a Reese's and it's never gonna live it up. totally is yeah and I, I like it's happened with everyone like i tried the justin's one and like newman's own and stuff and every time i'm like i should just be eating a Reese's cup next up we're gonna try the rice cake so this is a be in your element organic dark chocolate dipped rice cake it's basically a Thin, very thin rice cake, sort of drizzled with chocolate on top. I think this is supposed to be something where it's like one of those, oh, this is like a little bit healthier, you know? One entire cake is only 80 calories, and it's fairly sizable, whereas I don't know how much this Unreal thing is, but probably way more than 80. No, it's not drizzled in chocolate. It's completely coated in chocolate on top. Yeah, and one side has just got like a chocolate layer of coating like you said and the rest is a straight up rice cake but it's only one side i feel like it should be completely surrounded with chocolate no do you guys like rice cakes i used to eat them more my mom used to have them in the house all the time when i was a kid i would yeah. eat them with peanut butter pretty regularly yeah but that was i mean 25 years ago probably right. the last time i did that i mean this thing is I, you forget that rice cakes just <laughs> Taste like you're eating a, a coaster. Yeah. I was literally just going to say, this is a consistency of a coaster. Yeah, I, I also used to mouth rice cakes a lot as a kid, but for some reason, <laughs> I, just, I, I stopped eating them a long time ago. I mean, rice cake, the flavor of rice cake isn't bad. It's just sort of like not eating anything. This rice cake would have no flavor were it not for the chocolate, though. There's at least been rice cakes that have salt on them or some sort of seasoning. And I still think you could salt like the bottom, like the salt and chocolate combo would be good. This is just a bland-ass rice cake with a thin layer of passable chocolate. It's still tough to rate. Like, yeah. I think it's still going to be a tough one to rate. This one's not hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I could see how somebody would, who is on a you know super strict diet but has a sweet tooth could eat this and feel like they're still getting some of that chocolate in and it at is? only 80 calories. Yeah, um, I mean, 80 calories isn't bad. So I think if you're really trying to cut sweets back, this is you know may not be a terrible alternative. But uh, since Chad seems to know how he feels, let's start with him. This thing is fucking horrible. I took two bites. <laughs> I put it down. It's like hard to bite into. It tastes kind of stale. The chocolate doesn't even have a good flavor. The rice cake flavor is so bland. It's this thing's a complete waste of time. Hate that. Whoa. Ooh. I did have to check the, I mean, because it did taste stale upon first bite, but it doesn't expire for like over almost a year from now. So we're nowhere close. <sighs> I mean, there's not, there's not a ton of taste of it. The chocolate is okay because it's chocolate. I, I definitely don't hate it. I'm not even sure I dislike it. It's just sort of like eating nothing. This, for me, really is almost the definition of an indifferent to dat. So that's what I'm going to go with for this time around. Geiger, what do you think? Did you polish it all off, Geiger? Yeah. I mean, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. This is basically just like eating 
chocolate that's like been like taped to air molecules. There's like nothing. <laughs> it's just a a vehicle for getting chocolate. Does that <laughs> Is that how tape works? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I'm pretty sure. You can tape stuff to molecules. <laughs> you guys can look that up later. Uh, for now, let's just keep moving on like that never happened. You know what I mean? It's just a vehicle for getting chocolate in your mouth. The Rice Krispies may as well not even be there. I wish they were Rice Krispies. Yeah, they would much better for Rice Krispies. It, the, the cake is, I think, it, like I said, if you, they had seasoned the rice cake in some way, it could have tasted good. It was just so bland and styrofoamy. I mean, the chocolate tasted good, but the rest of it was bad. I, I would probably put it in indifferent. Like, again, I do think it is a... Like, if that was a healthy, it was at a snack in my office, and I just wanted something that tasted like chocolate, but it wasn't going to be too, like, caloric, I'd grab that. Or, dat, sorry. But I would say I'm probably <laughs> indifferent to that. If somebody handed this to me at a party, I would leave the party. <laughs> <laughs> all the, you're that, ladies? If you want Chad to leave your party. <laughs> Which they all do. <laughs> Except that he'll come back in his Lambo, and you'll be like, throw those rice cakes out. <laughs> He's back with the Lamborghini. Okay. <laughs> What do you guys guess? If I go to Google and type in, can you tape things to? What is the autocomplete? Oh, that's a oh, good boy. good question. Oh, can you tape uh, things to... Uh, it's got to be some kind of surface. I mean, it's got to be something dirty. It's not, but, but I just want to hear what you guess. Can you tape things to a wet window? <laughs> <laughs> I now want you to Google that, and I don't care what can else. Can you tape things to... Uh, I don't know. I really think. Can you tape things to your tongue? It was mailboxes. Can you tape things to <laughs> mailboxes? Which I have never once in my life wondered if I could tape things to. Like, why would you tape something to a mailbox? I don't understand. Also, why is that something you're confused about? Unless it's like a city ordinance. Like, are you, you allowed to? It. Tell, now, tape. be honest. Yeah. Be honest. Tell me, have you ever wondered if you could tape things to a wet window? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm pretty sure you can tape things to a dry window. All right. Uh, but I've never really... That's a specific use case. I never really thought... Oh, that window's looking pretty wet. I wonder if it'll hold some tape. And then who's the lunatic who types it into Google? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Enough times so that it shows up in search history. Up. All right. So, uh, speaking of guys who drive Lambos... Okay, I gotta go get... Trying... <laughs> Geiger's leaving to get his drink. I was about to say, guys who uh, drive Lambos drink Red Bull. Do they? <laughs> sure. I actually saw a, a guy driving a Lambo around New York City. We were down in Battery Park, which is like the very furthest south part of Manhattan. And it was uh, super trafficy, and a guy was just driving around in his Lambo. And he had the tops down because it was a really nice day. And he was just sitting there stuck in traffic every, like, 10, 15 seconds, just revving his engine super loud so that, like, <laughs> assholes like me would stare at him and, like, take pictures of his car, which, of course, I did. It was a beautiful car. Would you say he was hot or not? Oh, he was a 10 out of 10, yeah. He was, like, this old guy, <laughs> but he was not drinking a Red Bull, so I challenge your hypothesis, Novak. Why? Wait, you took pictures of him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll post it to the Instagram. Did you FaceTime him? <laughs> I asked him who his daddy was or whatever it was. I forget. <laughs> Say hi to daddy. All right. I got to go get the Red Bull. Red Bull is like the first he energy drink. for the Red Bull. Oh, he's got to go get that, that bull. He's going to ride the bull. I was wondering if he also... Go ahead. You can go. No, we'll, you can talk... Leave. we'll talk about you while you're gone. This isn't for you. <laughs> this isn't for you. <laughs> Chad's right. a really Why swell guy. <laughs> he definitely... Slathered up his crotch with peanut butter. Oh, you right. So that lamb guy would come over. Yeah. Oh, my dog's poop smelled like peanut butter because we had a Kong. Or my dong. <laughs> he, dong full of peanut butter is what he did. I mean, there's nothing. There's. It's completely wrong that he took a bunch of pictures of this guy in his Lambo, right? Right. Yeah. No, that's terrible. Well, first of all, I don't know what's worse: feeding your dick to your dog. Or feeding this guy's ego by taking <laughs> pictures of his dumb fucking stuff. What would happen if you showed up to Lambo in a Lambo? <laughs> it would immediately be pelted with beer cans and get door dinged by idiot tailgaters who are hammered. But I want to try it. All right, I'm back. Red Bull. Welcome bro. back. So we're going to be trying some Red Bull and Geiger. We have a little sneak peek as to what the rating is, but why don't you fill everybody in? Right, right. So if we like... The Red Bull. So we're, to be clear, we're drinking Red Bull Blueberry. So not the original version. 
I used to drink more uh, pretty frequently post college, and I think tastes like a combination of cough syrup and piss. Yeah, this is the blue edition. Yeah, blue edition, blueberry flavored. So if we like it, we're gonna say bully bully in like a British accent. If we just are sort of in the middle on it, we'll say it's acceptable. Get it full at the end. Yep. And then if we don't like it, we go, this is bullshit. And you got to yell it like that. Okay. Because I like swearing. All right. So have I... you drank Red Bull a lot? I, I mentioned I drank it. Uh, like I used to drink some energy drinks, not in college, but right after. Actually, when I was living with you, Chad, because I would live and sleep like a vampire and then have to work the next day. I find that they make me kind of twitchy and I don't really like them that much. I've never, in all honesty, fi- actually finished a full Red Bull. I've had like sips here and there. I've tried a couple different kinds, but I've never like got one, sat and drank the whole thing on my own. I used to drink a lot of Rockstar and the Rockstar cans are twice as much, like they're twice as big as a Red Bull. And so I used to drink at least one of those a day. And then sometimes I would drink two And then one time I had three and I literally could feel like my heart trying to escape my chest. Like I could hear every beat and it was like, you know, it felt really weird. And I was just like, I think this is probably not good for me. And so I cut them out like completely cold turkey the very next day. So this will be getting back on the bull literally for you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is going to be a relapse. All right. I've had some off and on since then. But like since then, I haven't even been able to drink a full like can or whatever. All right. right, So we whose dumbass idea was it for us to drink these at (laughs) nearly 11 o'clock at night? (laughs) (laughs) Ugh, it just smells. Yeah, it, smells, it has that like same. It smells horrible. Weird medicinal Red Bull smell. I taste no blueberry at all. It like smells blue somehow. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever the hell blue smells like, this is it. Yeah, that's really accurate, actually. It smells like blue. It doesn't taste blue though. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad if thing? If you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. Right under the caffeine content on these bottles, not recommended for children, pregnant, or nursing women. I know, so they, they can say that for anything, but it makes you worry a bit. It does have a lot of vitamin B6 <laughs> and vitamin B12 and niacin, so it's kind of like a health drink in a lot of ways. This is basically like drinking broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a Red Bull in ages, but it kind of just seems like it tastes like Red Bull. I don't notice much difference in the flavor i can't tell a difference between this and red bull either to be honest all right i'll um get us started this is sort of like drinking the bubble gum you get from a 25 cent machine in liquid form it's terrible i don't know why anyone gets this stuff short of a college student who needs to write a term paper so for me this is bullshit (laughs) geiger what do you think I mean, I guess its other big use is as a mixer in, like, vodka drinks, if I recall correctly. Red Bull vodka. I used to drink that at a decent Yeah. You make the vodka drink, you make the something drink. Yep, that's a <laughs> possible <laughs> reference everyone will get. What the fuck is that? Geiger <laughs> got it. It's a song from, like, when we were in college. Is it uh, Chumba Wumba? It's tub- tub- yeah, thump? it's Tub Thumping. What make is a vodka <laughs> drink. I'll make a whiskey drink. <laughs> I got knocked down, but I got up again. Anyway, I'm not singing. That song is about as good as this drink. Yeah, this isn't good. I don't know. I'll probably drink it because I have to get up early tomorrow. So I might drink a little bit tomorrow to help me wake up. But this isn't good. I wouldn't drink it again. It doesn't taste like blueberry. It just tastes like Red Bull, which to me, again, even amongst energy drinks, I think Red Bull tastes bad. I'd prefer others over this. I am giving this a bullshit. All right, Chad. Is there a triple bullshit? Well. <laughs> But I get up again. Where's the whiskey drink right. part? Totally worth it. <laughs> I don't know how far into the song is that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so now we've continued our tradition of playing dog shit songs on this podcast. <laughs> Pretty great. That song is like this drink. Bullshit. It's fucking terrible. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste any different than Red Bull. If I got knocked down from this drink, I would not get up again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Fuck this drink. <laughs> this drink killed Chad, is what we're trying to say. Chad is just not digging the products tonight. I'm hoping the Tim Tams turn you around. 
He ate three quarters pizza. He did eat three quarters <laughs> pizza. I really have been looking at these Tim Tams in the bag for a long time, kind of ready to uh, eat them. I've been looking forward to having them on the podcast ever since you delivered them to us, Gagger. I um, picked Tim Tams. I've Tim never seen these before. Yeah, I've had them a bunch. And the reason I picked them out is because, so I did not know they were made up. Was this Arnott guy from the United States? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Go ahead. You talk and I'll find out. Well, there, no, you don't have to buy it. The reason I, I asked that is I will find out. Okay, Damn it. fine. Also find out that wet window question. I don't want people to learn anything from this podcast. No, 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 no. Don't bother. I'm reading the back. I have my answer. He's from Australia. Yeah. He's an Australian. That's the, why I asked. And because he, these were previously only available in Australia, other than some select stores here in the United States. And so we have an office in Australia at my work. And people would put in orders for the Australian people when they would come back to the States of like, oh, I want like three boxes of this Tim Tam and three boxes. Like there was this big craze in the office. And then it would be like a rumor would start like, oh, I've got Tim Tams at my desk and stuff. So people would come around and grab a Tim Tam. And I, wow. I, yeah, and I'm building it up too much. I like them. I think they're a fine cookie. I don't understand the obsession, but I think they're good. So there's a lot of different flavors. I thought we would just start. This is the original and the most popular in the office. So I thought I'd start here and see what you guys thought. Now, my wife loves Tim Tams. She was so excited when she saw these there. And I don't know if she tried them. She was in New Zealand for a while, many years back. I wonder if she tried them then. I don't know. I should ask her. But she told me to relate this pro tip with a Tim Tam. If you ever have like a cup of tea or something with it or coffee, because the Tim Tam is a long, it's like a long rectangle. So you bite one corner of it off. Then you bite the complete opposite corner off. So now you've made sort of like a Tim Tam straw. Then you dunk one part of it into the tea and start sucking it up through the Tim Tam. And then once the Tim Tam is like completely full and soaked with tea, then you eat it. And she said it's absolutely delicious. And chocolate and tea seems like an odd combo to me. I want to try that with milk, actually. That sounds pretty good. But Yeah. <laughs> and I, when she told me that, I was like, oh, maybe I should text the guys and tell them to get a cup. And then we'll test it with the uh, Red Bull. But uh, <laughs> and now that I drank that Red Bull, I'm so glad we didn't do that. <laughs> I typed Tim Tam into Google, Mm -hmm. and the first three, here's the first three things that came up after. The first one is Tim Tam Slam, Uh then Tim Tam Cookies, Uh and then the third one, Tim Tam Human Flesh. (laughs) (laughs) That is creepy. I'm eating it now. It does have a bit of a meaty flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've developed the taste for human flesh. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this is definitely a... Uh-huh. So it's for those who have not had them, it's like two cookies with like chocolatey cream in the middle, and then the whole thing is covered in chocolate. I thought this was going to be the thickness of, uh, you know, those wafers that come in like the chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, mm-hmm. and the outside just wafery. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Nope. I thought there was going to be more like those. I thought they're going to be skinnier, but this is a, definitely a fatter. Feels more like a cookie uh, than a wafer, or and the, it's listed as biscuit. 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 That one's for you, Kurt. <laughs> That's good. Mm. This is tasty. Very good. So sometimes I'll do this when I eat a Reese's stick, you know, or like a Kit Kat or something where it has like two cookies stacked on top. You like rotate it kind of 90 degrees and then bite the top cookie off. Do you ever do this? I'm No, I'm glad you said that. That's, I do that with the Reese's stick all the time. <laughs> Wait, all what time. are you talking about? Oh, you mean like eat the top layer of cookie yeah, off? Yeah, yeah, eat the top layer of cookie off. And then, especially with a Reese stick, there'll be like some peanut butter left that you can like then scrape off with your teeth and stuff like that. Yeah. I love doing that. Same that you with like a nutty bar. I was just going to say, the only thing I've ever done that is with a nutty bar. Those are really like easy to do that. And then you have the exposed creamy peanut butter. It's much harder to do with the Tim Tam because the cookie is like so much wider. It's like mm. over twice as wide from a Reese stick. But All right. Good though. Geiger, since you're... Uh... Mr. Tim Tam. You are Mr. Tim Tam. <laughs> known worldwide as Mr. Tim Tam. Hey, everybody. It's Mr. Tim Tam here to talk to you about cookies. I am known as Tim Tam Cookie. Chad's known as Tim Tam Slam. <laughs> and you are Tim Tam Human Flesh. Yeah, yes, I am. That's because I eat so many Tim Tams, it's replaced part of my skin. I can't go outside to put stickers on wet windows because I might melt. You just created a skin suit out of Tim Tams, and then you're like, <laughs> it puts the Tim Tam in the mouth, or it gets the hose again. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs? you never seen uh, Silence of the Lambs? No, I no. do. I don't know why it was said in Mr. Bill's voice. But that's <laughs> that's the guy's voice, I think. Right? Silence of the Tams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was right there. No one saw it, but nothing. <laughs> wow. It was hanging there like a quiche. <laughs> 
We were letting it spoil so close to the ground, and then you picked it up. <laughs> Hanging like a geese. <laughs> All right, where were we? The cookie. You good. were baiting the Tim Tams. <laughs> I was trying. This is excellent. These are very good. Like I said, I've had them a bunch. I don't know if they're enough for me to like go crazy and demand people bring them overseas on a flight for me, but they're very, very good. The chocolate, I think what makes it good for me is the chocolate cream is actually creamy. It's not like that. St- it's even like if you look at Oreo cream, it's still kind of hardish. This is like really soft and like you can lick it. It's really good. So I would give this. <laughs> that came off really you, can, not- you can lick it. <laughs> You know, the best part about the cream is you can lick it. No, I just meant like it's soft enough that it's not like chewy. Forget it. Fuck this. I love that. This is good. All right. There's a starting off with the love. All right, Chad, what do you think? Uh, this is a really, really hard one. On the one hand, it is delicious. I might have to give this a human flesh dat. <laughs> oh, man. This is tough. This is a really good cookie, but... I'm trying to think, like, does it really, you know, jump into that sort of top pantheon of things that that I would eat? Like, you know, if I if I see this on the on the shelf at the store, like, I'm not really sure I'm going to buy this over. I'm not going to say what you think. I'm going to say. Do not say if the word Reese's comes out of your mouth, I'm flying out there and socking you. No, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say Nutty Buddy. Google it. Remember the name. (laughs) What? Nutty Bar. No, Nutty Buddy. If this was next to, like, a Nutty Buddy, which I, this is kind of a similar cookie where it's, like, two sort of, like, wafers or whatever. Slow down. Are we nutty talking about the peanut-shaped cookie with the peanut butter in the middle? Nutty uh, bars are the wafery thing, but they are peanut. Yeah, it's, it's a chocolate peanut butter bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of a Nutter Butter. Yes, Sorry. you are. Oh, yeah. So you're thinking of. Whatever. Anyways, like that. Oh, well, that rating's going to go down in history of us just missing it because <laughs> these Tim Tams... Are a revelation for me. I've never tasted wow. them. Wow! I love these things. These Ooh. are delicious. It's just the right amount of chocolate, I think, on the inside, and just the right amount of coating, and just the right amount of wafer. I could see myself buying these again, and telling everybody at work about them, and even bringing them to parties where I can hand them out to people. So I'm going to give these <laughs> Tim Tams a love debt. And that's going to have us just short of our first whatever three love dads oh, was. Oh, man, I ruined it again. First with the Cadbury <laughs> egg, now with the Tim Tams. No, like, the, these are available at Target, I think, if you want them. I mean, Chad's right. I, there would there'd be other cookies I'd grab over it, like Fudge Stripe. I love Fudge Stripe cookies. Really? I would easily get them. But that doesn't mean there aren't room for room for lots of love on the cookie shelf. Right. No, that's so, fine. I would like these over Pod Stripe, but yes, you're right. It's not it's not the best cookie I've ever eaten in my life. But I'm not saying it has to be. I was just trying to compare it to other sort of similar cookies and like yeah. I was just trying to think like the way that I feel about like a nutty buddy, you know, that like brings out some emotions in me that this Tim Tam just doesn't really do. I so. love nutty bar. If we did had done a nutty bar, I would love that too. I'm I'm gonna make a strong bold statement here coming out. This may be from the delirium of uh, episodes nineteen and twenty, but I would rather eat this than an Oreo cookie. All right. All right. Hot take, hot take. You are burning all your bridges with me tonight. (laughs) (laughs) You are going to have to show up in a Lambo to catch his eye again. (laughs) I'm with you. I mean, I think it is because I still am not prepared to eat an Oreo uh, by choice, but these are really good. The Tim Tam... It's the clear winner. So Mr. Arnaud has made himself a fine cookie here. And it's the winner today, but some uh, decently rated snacks. The Unreal got some decent ratings, and the rice cake was a pile of shit. So, <laughs> guys, any final uh, accents you'd like to? Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, governor. No. <laughs> well, you, you wanted the bully rating just for the sake of... You say somebody saying bully, but it was a drink that no one was going to like. Well, so. yeah, I thought maybe I'd like it. I have to account for that possibility. Um, I didn't think any of us would. Um, next next episode is going to be our MLB episode coming right on the tails or uh, right before the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. We'll be trying out some ballpark snacks. So make sure you catch us next time. And that'll do it for this week, guys. Uh, that's any. I don't know what else. I was <laughs> that sure is the end, huh?
Someone must have another smart ass comment. Nope. <laughs> no. Geiger, you got some smart ass comment. You always oh. do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fuck those checks. <laughs> 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 All right. We'll see you next time with three. <laughs> Deuces. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>